First of all, your reaction to the Troy Parr red card? Um, yeah, I thought it was quite harsh, really. Um, I wasn't expecting it. It got me, you know, I didn't get a great view of it, but he didn't seem to do a lot, really. He was trying to take a, he was just trying to take the free kick quickly and just trying to get on the ball and, and um, you know, tries an attacking player like he's not. His, his attitude is always exemplary, really. He carries himself brilliantly. And um, I'm not sure, I'm, I'd imagine, I don't, I don't know, know if he's ever been sent off. Um, so he's, I think it's quite unfortunate, really. I think, uh, and the double, the double blow, really, is that it rules him out of our game in Iceland on Tuesday, which is a big blow, really. And uh, I thought when they sent Moise Keane off, I thought we were in the ascendancy then, we were going to play 11 v 10, and I felt that would be a great opportunity for us. And then <laughs> I didn't see that coming, that Troy was going to get sent off as well, I must admit. Um, and uh, so it ended 10 each, and that was that. What, there's nothing you can do. Stephen, it's fair to say there was, there was uh, six yellow cards handed out altogether for the Irish team. It wasn't really a dirty match, was it? No, it wasn't. No, no, no. We, we, we knew the players had to prepare for, you know, the an element of gamesmanship. You know, I think we prepared for it, you know, and I think we spoke about it, but um, ultimately... Uh, that's the way it goes, you know. I think suspensions could be costly, so it's important we don't rack up yellow cards. And unfortunately, with the red card, there's an automatic suspension, you know. But I think uh, it's two yellows, it just should be one match. But um, I think it was important for us because with John and Afalabi picking up an injury and uh, Troy Parrott uh, obviously suspended, and Aaron having stepped up, Aaron Connolly having stepped up, the seniors gives us. <laughs> it, it's quite a few missing from the from the previous um, camp, you know, uh, where we beat Armenia and Sweden. So we'll have to uh, some of our players now will have to really step up and and perform in in Iceland, and that's the big challenge for us. Just there was an incident with uh, Jason Knight when he went over to the far side of the pitch, and he he got a bit of a, a nudge, but it was a it was a fairly strong shoulder in the back. Like incidents like that, to Irish players, and I'm I'm not saying you need to encourage gamesmanship from the Irish, but they need to win free kicks like that maybe and be a bit more street smart. No, I think I'm not going to criticise Jason Knight for being absolutely honest. You know. Yeah, I no, I sorry, I didn't mean that either. Yeah, but I think I think he, you know, he's exemplary. He's a 2001 birthday. And uh, which is amazing. He's eligible for the under-19 championships in two years' time, and he he's already made his debut this season for Derby County and came on tonight. And I thought he was, you know, 18-year-old player. Just he was terrific when he came on and showed a lot of leadership. You must be really disappointed though as well that you didn't get the three points because there were shots in the first half from Conor Ronan and Troy Parrott as well went really close. The second half as well, you had some really good chances, um, and you know. To a man, every player had a good game out there tonight. There wasn't really a bad performance in your in your in your team. No, I felt um, Italy had uh, had us under pressure in the first twenty minutes and created a good, a good chance. With, you know, Pinamon, Pinamonte's header that looked, uh, you know, uh, was very close. They had a, you know, they had the elements in the first half. We had them in the second half, and the, it was it was quite a blustery win. Made conditions difficult, passing difficult tonight. But I felt we passed our way back into the game. Quiven Keller particularly showing great composure in goal, and uh, and very accurate passing that helped us get a stranglehold on the game. And the midfield players, Conor Coventry, Jason Malumbi, um, gave us a platform. We're brave enough and showed good technical ability in the midfield. I felt we got ourselves back into the game and had two good chances then with Troy Parrott's shot and also Conor Ronan's effort, which looked like it was in. And um, 
with strikers following up on both. Adam I was following up on both uh, both attempts and you know it just those are the margins, you know, we've chances in the second half. Troy Parrott was unlucky not to score when Adam Ida set him up. Jason Malumby's free kick, absolutely uh, it was a brilliant strike, a great save by, by that goalkeeper. And we we chances that we didn't quite connect with in the way that we would have wanted to from Dara O'Shea and 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 Adam Oyd and Jason Knight had a chance at the end. So we had a lot of efforts. Um, I would say more than they had um, overall. But they're, they're an excellent team and they, 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 tactically it's very interesting and you have to adapt. And uh, Pellegrini, who's been in their senior international team, of course, plays so high as a left back. You know, he just plays so high and stretches the pitch and poses you a problem with the three forwards. And, Zach Elvis said he had to do, even though he was a right winger, had to do, you know, a, a great defensive job as well. Um, but um, I thought Adam Ida was uh, a handful for their their centre halves all night. Bastoni played for Inter versus Juve last weekend, and uh, Adam Ida caused their centre halves a lot of trouble. And he was he was disappointed with his performance in Armenia against Armenia here in the last game, and but. It was, it was it was the total opposite today. He he was so aggressive in his running, and uh, so direct, to great pace and great, you know, a lot of conviction in his play, and uh, I was quite pleased with that. And I felt uh, that gave us always made sure we had a threat, you know, and we had the pace of Michael over Femi then coming on, all being all, also been a threat, and um, so. I thought M Michael worked very hard when he came on. I feel uh, we're asking him to play in a position that he's unaccustomed to, wide on the left. Uh, it's not somewhere where he's really played uh, for his club or, or country, really. So he, uh, his angles of running are different. And uh, but he got the crowd on the edge of the seats. He, ran, he was running 70 yards with the ball, and uh, it's, not many players can do that, you know. And it's exciting. It's exciting. What, what does it say about you and, and your squad and what you're instructing them to do? That this young scale of UCD fellow could come in and play left back, which is not the normal gap, is it? No. So and, and to do well, be really kind of tidy and play some nice ball as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, Daryl Leahy, of course, and Trevor Clark were, were both been injured. And Liam, who's been played left centre back against Bahrain for us and against Mexico and Toulon. So um, it's a different position for him. But um, uh, we played him left back. We expected Moise Kane to play on the right because he has been playing on the right in the previous two internationals. So we expected him to play on the right. And Liam was, would have been more suited to playing against him. Uh, and um, we'd young left back in the squad, Cameron Ledridge, but Liam would have been suited to playing. But obviously they, they they changed their team, and it took Liam a bit of time to find his feet playing in that position. To be fair, uh, but once the opening 20 minutes came out of the way, he got more confident and he had a very good second half defensively. Done a good job, and uh, he wasn't exposed. And um, that tackle, <laughs> that tackle he made, <laughs> when I think uh, the crowd, <laughs> the crowd really. Yeah, it was such an honest tackle, won the, won the ball and um, it really got the crowd on the edge of their seats because it was, it was ferocious and uh, he did really well. And Stephen, considering um, there was four changes from that game um, away to Sweden, there was still really good cohesion in the side, so were you pleased with that or do you feel maybe could have even be been better? Or I think we're even capable of being better and I think, but I think it was an excellent performance and I think they're a very, very good team. And you can talk about levels of performance, but it's doing it against top international players. Don't forget, two of their players are now flying out with the senior team now for the game, and two of them have just a different two have just come back, you know, from from the senior team. So you've got uh, you've got um, Catrone and Kane who've been involved with the senior team, and you've got Pellegrini and Tonali who've just been so they they um, so they're seasoned pros. Majority of it, like the players I'm talking about there are 
air players are still a lot of them under 19 you know uh, try part at Adamoida we're speaking about Jason Knight we're speaking about Connor Coventry you know and speaking about those players Leo Connor so they're young players still so they've done brilliantly I feel well he comes he certainly comes into contention um, I mean, his injury isn't that serious. Though. He's not injured. No, he um, he just hasn't had a run of injury, and you have to manage Michael. He's a program, and he sorry, Afalabi, oh Afalabi. Yeah. Sorry, I thought you meant Obi Femi. No, sorry, no, Afalabi is uh, yeah. Jonathan is out. He's told, he's told yeah, out, yeah. He won't be travelling to Iceland. So with him and Troy out the Iceland game, would you call anyone else? Ian Steve, are you happy with who you have? Yeah, uh, we've called Aaron Drynan in. Aaron Drynan has uh, joined up tonight, and um, we'll come to. He's playing in Sweden now, gosh, in Sweden, so he, he'll come to Iceland with us. I just finding out the position of the table now, Stephen. You've got, you know, you've stayed top of the table, even though you've, you know, dropped two points here at home. But the important thing was you didn't lose. So you're kind of happy now with the position after four games in the group. Well, it's certainly it's a it's a very very good start and. Of course, we would have been happy with that Sweden away winning, and and the two home games. And but we're not ecstatic about drawing tonight. We feel we could have won the game in the end. The players are a little bit disappointed they didn't win, but that shows you how far they've come in such a sm- such a short uh, time. And I suppose we could have went the goal behind in the opening 20 minutes as well. But overall, I feel a win would not have flattered us. And um, those are the margins, you know, those are the margins. It was important not to lose also.